Hello everyone, welcome to another editing video in which I'm going to show you my new favorite plugin for Lightroom, which is DxO Pure Raw. And we're going to look at two examples. One example here, a streetscape or architecture photo from Venice, which was shot at ISO 800. And then we're also going to look at a night photo shot at ISO 6400. And I will show you what DxO can do for such a photo compared to Lightroom and its AI noise reduction, which since it's been introduced, I think a year or a year and a half ago, has been a game changer for me when editing my photos because suddenly I could shoot at ISO 800 or Woodland without worrying about any noise or I could shoot at 3200 ISO or 6400 ISO for my night photography and still get relatively clean results. So how does DxO Pura stack up against Lightroom and is it a worthwhile investment? So as I said first let's look at this image here. So the original image shot at ISO 800 70 millimeters. Let's go to the development module so I applied my basic settings here bring down the highlights a bit bring up the shadows also went down to the details and had to increase the details quite a bit which for this image as we're gonna see isn't so good because it also adds to the noise in the image but if I bring it down to cope with the noise and you see it looks soft so default would be 40 but I have to increase it quite a bit to get a good texture here but all in all out of the box what Lightroom can do for this image it's not too good. What you can always do now with Lightroom is use here the AI noise reduction. I already did this and this already gives a much better result. So here you see this is completely clean. I also could bring up here the amount quite a bit to introduce details and now this is a usable image. But how does it compare to DxO Pure Raw? Let me now show you the side-by-side -side comparison. So let's first do a blind comparison. Left against right what do you think looks better here so i'd say here on the right side there's a little bit more detail in terms of noise you don't really see much detail both look very good but yes yeah, i said here the detail looks a little crisper now let's go to 200 percent and yeah, let's just look here how clean the right side looks compared so it's both more detailed as you can see here crisper and yeah, perfectly clean. So there is no noise at all. And also all the detail is preserved and even increased. Just look at this area. Now, what do you think looks better? Let me now show you here on the right side. This is the DxO version. And on the left side, that's Lightroom. For DxO, I just used the default settings. I didn't touch any of the settings and I'm going to show you the available settings in a second. But from my experience, most of the time when I use DxO, I don't have to do anything, which is good because if you go to file, you'll usually find the DxO here under plugin extras and there are two options. So one is where you get a preview and can make fine tuning to the image. So seeing how changing some of the settings influences the output, but there's also a process instantly version which you can use for batch processing. So for example I shoot a lot of focus stacking where I have a whole sequence of images and here with this option I can apply the same settings, the same noise reduction and sharpening to all of the images and yeah, get great results out of the box. Now let's look at the night photo I shot on my yearly photo tour to the Akshigaga. So in February 2025 there's another tour. If you want to join me there's a link to it in the description. You can take incredible photos of the dunes and also of the stars. So this year is a dawn photo which was shot at ISO 6400 and if we zoom in yeah there's a lot of noise so let's go to 100% but still a lot of noise but you see those stars here twinkle behind the noise so ideally I can remove the noise and preserve the stars, which is possible already with Lightroom. But I want to directly show you a side by side between Lightroom and DxO again first as a blind comparison so you can decide which looks better. Okay, so let's scroll through the image a bit so you see stars on both sides still show up. Noise is nearly completely removed and yeah, I think both sides look fantastic. Left side, a little crisper, a little sharper. Also, if we go to the horizon, you can tell there was more sharpening applied to the left side. But all in all, both sides look very good. Here to the edges, I think the left side is a bit better. Now let's see. So left side, Dixio Pura, right side Lightroom. Pretty close. For Lightroom, I used 
60 as a setting for the noise reduction. For DxO, I used 45 and, and I want to show you what I mean by that. So let's go back to the original image and I want to show you how you can make changes in DxO and what the available settings are. As I said, for Lightroom, there's just one slider. For DxO, you have a little bit more settings to play with. So let's go to Plugin Extras and preview and process with DxO Pure Raw 4. Now for me, I have a Dell XPS, which I bought more than two years ago, so it's not the fastest system. Sometimes it takes a while for the plugin to load up and also for the updating, but all in all, yeah, this is out of the box how it looks. It's darker than what I showed you now because in Lightroom I already pulled up the brightness, but what you can do now is go here to the one to one preview, scroll up a bit, find a section where we have some stars. And now here the before and after, this is just a very quick preview. What you have to do is down here, press on update to update the preview. You can also make the setting that it will always update. But for me, this usually takes a while and I don't want to have it updated all the time when I scroll around, which is why I've set it to manually have to press here. And now I see how incredibly clean this looks. Now you can go up here first, the most important setting. This is the old version, Deep Prime. I now use the Deep Prime XD2, which also uses AI to enhance the photo even more. And also I usually don't see any artifacts in the process. Now here under advanced, you can increase the luminance setting to apply even more noise reduction. Now I have to update again. And here this force details is for preserving the details of the original image. For me, a very important setting is this here, lens softness. Usually have it at standard and this is what introduces sharpness based on the lens you use. And sometimes I have to go to soft because there can be too many sharpening fringes at some high contrast edges. Most of the time I keep it at standard. If you have a very out of focus image, you can also try what strong and hard do. And sometimes those can work wonders, but you'll get fringes. And I show you at the end of the video, a very quick trick, how you can easily remove those. So this is the settings you have here. I also want to show you, let's zoom out again. Per default, Dixo will also remove the vignetting based on the lens model and also chromatic aberration. If you don't want to use the vignetting removal, you can just deactivate it. And then since a DNG is created, a raw file, you can add the removal of vignetting in Lightroom. So you can combine the two. So if you just want to use DxO to reduce the noise and add sharpening, you can do so. Just switch over those two and use the settings from Lightroom or keep those two on and then switch them off in Lightroom. So you shouldn't have both active. So if you do those two settings here, then in Lightroom, in the raw module, you should switch it off or vice versa. So those are also settings you can do output format. I typically use DNG. As I said, then I maintain all the capabilities of the raw processing, which is important. Down here, you specify the destination and the file naming, and then you just press process now, which I've already did before. And for me on my system, it takes between 20 and 40 seconds to process such a photo. So if you want to edit a batch of photos, you usually would do this, start the processing and then grab a coffee or something. Now, I already talked about this since I use standard sharpening here. I have those little fringes. I want to now quickly also show you how you can remedy this. If you feel you need to use this setting because your image otherwise feels too soft. So let's just open it in Photoshop. Now with such an image open in Photoshop where you want to remove fringes, you just create an empty layer above, then set this to darken. And now you can grab here the clone stamp tool at like 90%. Let's just go zoom in to 100%. And you sample directly above the horizon and just draw along the horizon and this will remove the fringes and it will not affect the darker foreground here because the dark mode just darkens pixels that are brighter than the ones I'm drawing with and I'm drawing here with this gray tone which is brighter than down here the foreground and you see how this looks and the before and after. So that's a very simple technique to remove such fringes. Or you could use here the brush, just holding down Alt, sample a color and then just draw. But there you have to sample multiple times because otherwise you see here it will not fit. So yeah, you have to always sample, draw, sample, draw, which is why I like to use the corn stamp tool a little bit more for this. And it's also non-destructive, so you can use an eraser to remove the effect if it's not working for some areas. So that's a very simple trick to remove sharpening fringes. And those usually also only occur on high contrast edges like the horizon and are not very problematic in other areas where you have many textures. 
Now, if this video so far sparked your interest, you can just get a free test version of DxO. 14 days, you can use it fully featured and just test for your camera and your lens combinations how it works, because I think this AI processing is dependent on the models they use. For my R5, it works very well, but depending on your camera, the results might be different. So I definitely recommend testing it. And then if you want to buy it, it costs 119 euros so yeah you have to decide what you do with your photos typically for me i want the best quality possible and from the tests i've done so far so i've used it for a few weeks i can just say the best possible results for raw photos i get this from dxo pure raw that's why i use it i want to print my images large so just do your tests, see if this makes sense for you. Also, there's one little problem I sometimes run into. So 20% of the time when I start the processing of the images, it will get stuck at like 20, 30% and then just stop. So I can then file an error report for DxO. Hopefully they will improve this. But for me, this happens one out of five times. Good thing so is if I start the processing again for the same image or images, it usually works. So it just happens some of the times. Also, I talked to a few other photographers and none of them had this problem so if you also use the software have the problem just leave a comment for me in the description maybe we can figure out how our systems are similar because i think it has something to do with maybe some drivers or something in my setup because otherwise i would have read about this also from others but one out of five times is not too bad would be much worth if it wouldn't work at all anyways so far that's it for the video i hope you found this interesting I currently use DxO for all my images. So every image I edit first goes through this plugin and I can get even higher quality images now. So hope you liked the video. Leave a thumbs up. See you next one. Bye.